If normal is getting on your nerves, then you got to change something. Being mediocre was driving me crazy. Poverty, I was sick of. So learn from your personal experience. Second, other people's experience. That's me, other people. That's your teacher. And what that junk DNA really is, is epigenetics. Now, it's just a fancy word for we respond to our environment. And more aptly, we respond to stress in our environment. You can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. You know, I get tired sometimes. That's different from being negative because I get mentally drained from my job at times. But to coat your mind from negativity, the way you can put a coating around your mind is with one simple thing, gratitude. Gratitude erases negativity. I'm gonna show you how this works. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, man, this ain't my day. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm tripping, I just don't feel myself. Every time you feel in the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop, just stop for a second. That's your friends, colleagues, the people you meet that can pass along to you their experiences, what's happened to them, the mistakes they made, how they corrected them, how they changed their health, changed their bank account, changed their income and changed their future other people now there's two kinds of people to learn from one is failures it's too bad failures don't give seminars right that would be valuable have them tell you how they lost it all and threw it all away threw their health away and threw their friendships away and things didn't work out well that would be valuable but now then we must also learn from positive people that have done well they've got the health and so we ask them how did you become so healthy they've got the skills so we ask them how did you become this skillful They've got the income, so we ask them, how did you get here in such a short period of time? And start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want, everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. You just haven't gone over the list and taken inventory in a long time. But the fact that you can walk, that's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go somewhere and get yourself something to eat, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go and turn the key and call someplace home, that's another blessing. The ability to dream is a blessing. The, the, the fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you're beautiful, that's another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know you. I could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. So now here's what's important in personal development. In learning from other people, we learn, number one, by observation. We learn what we see. We watch people that are successful in what they do. In sports, we watch their discipline. In business, we watch their discipline. Second, we learn by what we hear. Learn by listening. And then listen to the sermon on Sunday morning. Listen to the lecture. Listen to the teacher. Listen to someone who's got something good to say. And then number three is vitally important on personal development. And that is read all the books. All the books you can possibly read in your lifetime. Mr. Shof got me started on my library. I've got one of the better libraries. And then I started keeping a journal. One of the major things my teacher taught me was to keep a journal. He said, don't trust your memory. If you hear something good, just make a little note and write it down. So I would suggest you do the same. Anybody ever seen a professional bodybuilder? No? Okay.
professional bodybuilder hardly looks human to me. They are, it's unbelievable what they're able to do, but they show in a very real and tangible way what you can do to the human body when you understand how to put it under stress. Now, if you've ever been to the gym, you know that the real money is in tearing the muscle down, not building it up. You actually build up the muscle while you're sleeping based on what you've eaten. So the act of bodybuilding, of actually going into the gym is an act of tearing down so that you can create the stress so that your body can respond. Now, if you remember nothing else from my talk, remember this, humans are the ultimate adaptation machine. When you get a thought that's not your thought, stop letting that thought just take control. It doesn't belong there. Anything that's not in alignment with your dreams and your goals, let it go. And so you're going to stop in the middle of the day with your phone and you're going to put your earphones on and you're going to listen to whatever you listen to and you're going to take five minutes, 10 minutes, however long it takes, and you're going to get out of that funk. You, okay, how many of y'all, you, you get into a funk sometime? Let me see your hand, be honest. How many of you get into a funk for more than a, a, like, you let it just take the whole day? Just be honest. Stop, stop. Uh, we're going to do a five minute funk. I'm just being real. That's it. That's our rule for the new year. Five minute funk. That's it. And after that five minutes, it's over. And during the five minutes, we're going to stop it. So we might stop it at two. We might stop it at three. But by five, it stopped. What would your life look like if you only listen to your voice and you use your inner energy to help you to become successful? What would it look like? Just by being human, each and every one of you is capable of great change. Who you are today. does not predict who you can become. Who you can become is the answer to a very simple question. What do you want and what price are you willing to pay to get there? What do you want and what price are you willing to pay to get there? Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest athletes of our time, would show up on game day and if he saw anybody else at the gym as early as him, even though he was always the first on the court, he would end up practicing longer than that person. And I had the honor of interviewing one of those people one time. And he said, I went up and asked Kobe, Kobe, we have a game in an hour. Like, what are you doing out here practicing so long? And Kobe said, I needed you to know that I was willing to outwork you. Now let me ask you this. How many of you have listened to other people's voice? You listen to it, let me see your hand. You literally listen to other people's voice. Hands down. How has that worked out? I'm just be real, here's what's crazy. It don't even work and you still doing it. Like, it doesn't even work. Like, it don't even help you, but you still doing it. You know why? Because you're more, more, you're more concerned about how they feel about you than you how you love yourself. And you got a love problem and you need to fix it. You don't love yourself and you need to fix that. Why? Because you're concerned about what they think. They're not even you. 
And so we're going to fix our thinking. We're going to channel our energy. And this is going to be the best year of our life. Does that make sense? All right. Today is all about you. This is all about you. All right. I'm going to watch some tape later and I'm going to get some of this stuff for myself. So I love when CJ come up and Josh come up because I get to learn. And we got a powerful um, second day for you. Uh, we got, I love y'all so much that I think it was 2018. I, I heard, okay, so do me a favor. Stop being deep and take everything you learn and use it. And in that game, they ended up winning. And that lesson stuck with that guy forever. When you're willing to put in the work, when you're willing to take control of your environment and put yourself through the stressors required for adaptation, you literally can become anything. And my life is proof of that. So I stand here as one of the founders of a company, a company called Quest Nutrition, that we took from not existing to being valued over a billion dollars five years later. Thank you. That was the guy whose mother, not too long before that, just quietly assumed he was going to fail at college. But what I began to understand is that I could harness that ability to adapt.